Well, hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Sam. I am a student of the Bible and theology. I am a pastor. I've been a pastor for 22 years, and I'm a writer. My training involves biblical studies, theology, and biblical languages. Uh, we are journeying through the book of James. Um, we've done authorship, background, historical context, critical um, scholarship, look at it. We've talked about some of the rebuttals to that um, uh, and how that there's not really consensus on authorship um, and where to situate this. Um, but we are, for our purposes in this study, we're going to try to situate it um, earlier. So somewhere between 48 and 52-ish um, CE. Um, and the author, where we're going to conclude that the author is James, the brother of Jesus, the leader of the church in Jerusalem. He's writing to um, Jewish uh, people who have accepted Jesus as their Messiah early on in the church. And that um, because of Acts chapter 8 and the heavy um, persecution that they have split out, they've uh, scattered all over the place, they are dispersed all over the place. And James is writing to them. Um, this could be sometime before Jerusalem Council and could be telling us the book of James could be showing us an early form of um, Christianity when it was still very Jewish. Or it could be like um, right after that at some point. Um, and he's writing to the people who are still scattered out and have it come back to Jerusalem and trying to help them understand what faith looks like in the modern world for them, in their world. Um so we went through um, verses two through four in the last video, um, and we looked at this whole idea that um, that the things that we go through in life, the calamities, the afflictions, the trials, um, when those things happen to us, when we fall into them, when they fall upon us, um, James says we should consider it joy, not because we're going through them, not because they've happened to us, but because of um, what they what they can do in and through us to grow us to the person that God wants us to be, and so He says, what we should do is we should hupomone, or upomone. We should um, stand underneath the those trials and um, keep the weight on us. And the reason we should do that is because that will help grow us and strengthen our faith. Um, we're going to go into uh, verses five through eight today. Um, and, uh, what we need to understand is verses five through eight are not a separate section. Okay. Um, they can feel like a separate section. A lot of times, um, if you, if you're a, go to church or whatever, and your a pastor preaches on a lot of times they'll, they'll split them like I did and go two to four, five to eight, or maybe they'll do the whole passage. I don't know. Um, uh, but a lot of times they kind of separate those two, but they shouldn't be separated. This is one whole big thought process that James is doing here. Um, and five verse five is actually directly connected to verse four. Uh, so I'm going to read um, two through eight in the NRSV here. Um, I'm going to go. Sh I'm going to show you how um, the connection is made between verse four and verse five. How we know that to be true, and then we're going to walk through. Okay, so what is it, what are verses five through eight telling us about verses two to four, and what we need to be doing with that? Okay, so let's read it in the NR NRSV, and then uh, we'll go to the Greek, and then we'll kind of try to walk through what it, what was James trying to tell um, his first century audience. And what, what can we kind of glean as, you know, onlookers of this passage, okay? Um, verse 2, it says, My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials, like we said yesterday, calamities, afflictions of any kind, and we face them as kind of a, uh, kind of a take on this. It really means whenever they fall upon you or you fall into those uh, things of various kinds, consider it nothing but joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. That was yesterday. Verse 5. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Uh, so there's a lot to unpack there in verses five to eight, um, and we'll, we'll we'll dive into it. But the connection point. Um, so this is when I whenever I do these um, videos, this is how I kind of do it. I I print out um, in Greek, and then I go through and I translate and I highlight words I think are important. Okay, so um, and then I kind of pull those these and put them up here on the screen. Okay, so verse four um, concludes this way. It says, you know. Um, uh, that you may be perfect, uh, teleli, and uh, k and um, uh, alakleri. 
um, complete or finished in and in nothing falling short or lacking. Um, and that word is uh, lipomeni. Okay. Now the connecting um, thing that helps us go, oh, this is still one thought, is that in verse 5, um, James in Greek starts out this way. He says, idetis umon, and then he uses this word, lipeti, or lipete, which is the same uh, stem as the word um, at the end of verse 4. They both mean to fall short or lack. And actually, it comes from the word lipo, which means I leave or I abandon, I fall short or I lack something. Um, and so those two connect together, okay? Connect a thought together, okay? So that you wouldn't, um, so that you may be perfect and complete. Uh, so let endurance or staying up underneath it do its work. Why? Because then you can be perfect and complete and not lacking um, or falling short in any area of your faith, okay? Um, and then he says, and if you do fall short in any area of, of your faith, um, or if you lack something and he's going to say what you lack, then here's what you should do. Okay. Now the, the main gist of this entire section, all the way down to eight and maybe even further is this phrase in verse three. Um, it's, uh, uh, humon uh, humon tes pisteos. And it means, um, uh, he goes on to say, we know that the dokumion um, umontes pisteos means the, the trying or the testing of your faith. The whole point that James is trying to make here is that um, your faith is going to be tested by the things, um, these calamities or afflictions that fall upon you. What you do with that, with those things, is going to show you whether or not your faith will be strengthened or not. Um and so he says, if you allow those um, those things that you're holding on to, they're, they're a weight on your shoulders. If you if you stay under them, they are going to produce something in you that'll strengthen your faith, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. But sometimes, and I know this to be true because I've spent time talking with so many people, I've seen it even in my own life. Sometimes it's really hard to draw a connection between the thing you're going to and what it's going to produce inside of you. Sometimes it's really hard to understand, you know, um, why am I going through this? This doesn't seem fair. God, where are you? What, what are you doing in this? Like, how can this thing that I'm, I'm going through that I didn't ask for, that I didn't, how is this going to produce something in me? Like, I just can't see it. And so James wants to talk about that. And I think this is where verse five comes in when he says, if any of you lack wisdom or understanding, I don't think it's if any of you lack wisdom or understanding as to why this is happening to you. Okay. That's not what he's, he's not saying, you know, God, you better tell me why this is going on in my life. I need to know why. Oftentimes we don't get the answers. Why? I think what James is trying to talk about here is that if you lack wisdom or, or if you're lacking in wisdom or understanding of how this thing that has fallen on you or that you've fallen in when it comes to calamity or trial or affliction, how is this thing going to grow me? <laughs> like, this does not make any sense. James is saying, if that's where you're at, if you lack understanding in that kind of a thing, ask God. His, his advice is go to God, ask God about it. Um, and he says, you know, let him ask from the uh, didontos, from the giving God, Theu, and because uh, to all he sincerely um, and without reproach, um, and it will be given to him without, uh, well, hold on, um, let him ask from the giving God to all sincerely and not reproach, without reproach. And he will be given, or it will be given to him. Um, so I love that the um, the way that it, it gets put in the NRSV that um, who, uh, if any lacking wisdom, ask God who gives all to gives to all generously and ungrudgingly. The the word aplos uh, uh, means sincerely um, is kind of the way that I would translate that word. That God sincerely will is one who gives and. Um, 
uh, what is this, uh, Oini Dizontos, um, like reproach or um, God's not going to get mad at you. He's not going to reproach you and correct you for asking him for this. He's, he's a God who gives sincerely and without reproach when you come to him and ask him for these things. And it says it will be given to him. But then James goes on to say, but hold on, let that person or let him ask in faith. Um, in, in pisti, okay, uh, pisti, in faith, um, not, uh, what is this, diakrenomenos, okay, um, that word gets translated doubt, uh, diakrenomenos, um, and I think that's a kind of a, um, a hard translation of this word um, culturally, because uh, I don't think what James is trying to, to say here is that um, if you have a doubt about anything, that that's like evil or bad or wicked, okay? Um, because let's just be honest, when we go through these kind of things that don't make any sense, that are hurt, that are hurt, that are hard to go through, we doubt is one of the natural things <laughs> that comes up um, with this kind of stuff. The word um, uh, diokrenomenos, um, it actually kind of means to hesitate. Okay, it doesn't mean fully to doubt. It it, it it can be used that way, but it it really means to to hesitate or to to overthink something, to not not to not act because you overthought it, um, to to overjudge something, um, and 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 in overjudging that, you kind of don't do anything, don't say anything, don't ask anything because you're just well, I can't make up my mind on this thing. And so I just, I guess I'm going to do nothing about it, say nothing about it because I know it's going to cause me to hesitate because I'm overthinking it. I'm overjudging it. And so what James is trying to say here is let that person ask in faith or in full trust that there is a way that you can, in, in still having doubts, still fully trust God. Um, and you can still trust God in the midst of your doubts. So James says, let him, let him ask Trust in God. Even if you're, you have doubts about things, just ask and trust um, and not hesitating. Okay. Not, not overthinking it, not over judging it so much that you just can't, <laughs> that nothing comes out. You're like, oh, I, I guess I can't make a decision. I can't move, whatever. Um, he says, uh, for the one who hesitates or the one for the hesitating is like the waves of the sea, um, wind blown and wind tossed. And then he go, James goes on to say, uh, not for, or for that man should not suppose that he receives anything from the Lord. That man is of two minds, like he can't make up their mind. And so the, the reason that they're hesitating, the reason that they won't ask, they won't even go and go forward is because they just can't make up their mind on what they should ask or if they should ask or they're just you know, tossed back and forth. They're like, oh, I don't know. It says that man is of two minds, unstable in all the ways of him. Uh, so the way I kind of think about it is like this. Okay, so every once in a while, um, I have three kids, and when they were younger, this happened a lot. They would um, they would want to ask me something, but they weren't sure if I was going to say yes or not, <laughs> and they weren't sure um, if they could trust that I was going to respond, maybe even positively, to the question that they were going to ask. And so um, they would come up to me, and they would start talking. And the, or they would start asking the question, but it wouldn't come out clear. It would kind of be like, oh, well, uh, and uh, I, I usually would be like, okay, spit it out. <laughs> um, say something, you know, or, you know, do you have something to ask me? Um, because I can't answer something you're not willing to ask, right? I can't answer something that you, um, you're hesitating to ask me. Um, uh, I'm not going to try to read between the lines of what I think you might be trying to ask when you're not willing, when you're, you can't even make up your mind to ask me, um, and you can't move. So I would usually go, all right, what, what do you want? Spit it out. Use your words, say it like, <laughs> um, let's go here. Uh, and they would eventually after some prodding, maybe ask it or they're like, ah, never mind, And then walk away kind of a deal. And so I'm like, well, I can't answer what you're not willing to ask. Um, I, I can answer it. I may not always answer it the way you want me to, um, but if it's a sincere question that's not trying to like, you know, why did you kind of an anger thing? Like if it's just a, can you help me understand this or can you do this for me or whatever? Sure, I'll, I'll answer that question because you were, you were willing to ask it and you trusted me to answer it for you. So I'm going to answer it for you. Um, I think that's what James is trying to get here when he's talking about 
Um, the person who has, who's um, of two minds about things can't make up their minds. So they hesitate. They won't. They're overthinking it, overjudging it. They're not willing to just kind of trust that God's going to answer them. Um, and so maybe they're like, I don't, I don't know if I trust the answer God's going to give me. So they don't, ask, they don't, they don't ask. That's, that's what James is trying to get at here. And I think the word translating uh, the word diakronomenos as doubt has really kind of made a, a little bit of a disservice to what I think the the intent of what James has been trying to talk about here. It's it's not so much doubt. It's more of um, like I, I'm, I'm hesitating because I've overthought all of this and I'm like, I'm not sure the way God's going to answer this. I, I don't trust that this is maybe in my best interest. So I'm just not going to ask. And, and it's as if James is saying, listen, we shouldn't expect the Lord to answer a question that we are hesitant to ask him. Um, and so we shouldn't be hesitant to ask him. Even if we have doubts about what's going on, doubts about the whole thing, like we shouldn't be hesitant to ask the Lord to trust him um, because he, we shouldn't expect an answer for something that we're hesitant to ask. I think that's what James is trying to get at here. So if we're going through it, and, and remember, it's not about why we're going through it. The, the question shouldn't be, God, why did you take me through this? God, why am I going through this? Why do I have to do this? That's not what James is trying to get at here. What James is trying to get at here is the, the trying of your faith that produces endurance, that produces the ability to stand up underneath it. Um, if we're having a tr having trouble understanding how our faith should be growing because of these things that have just happened to us, we should ask God. And God, who is generous and who um, with, will not reproach us because of asking that question, he's going to want to answer that and help us understand how our faith can grow as a result of this thing that has happened to us. Okay, uh, so hopefully that's uh, that's been helpful. Um, we'll jump into um, verses uh, nine and following um, in the next video. Give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.